Hello, everybody, and welcome to Paranormal Nation Radio, Not So Normal. How's Denise and Ron doing tonight? We're doing good. We just keep fading in and out from the dark somehow again. Yeah, your camera does that all the time. So thank you, Nigel. And so I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. we got some special guests, and Ron and I are doing fine. We're looking forward to maybe giving you guys another graveyard tour. We found a couple more that are really interesting and uh, we're told through research and stuff that they're even more interesting than the last one we did. And so we're going to try to do that again before it's dark at 6.30. Hello, Bill. Right. Hi, Bill. But other than that, we have some great guests tonight. We have Michael and Tori Kratz. They are are part of, they, they own a company called Complete complete holistic and complete okay i'm gonna let them do it because i butchered it up already i'm gonna have them come on and i think i met them at the paranormal conference in pensacola i met mike there and i thought that the services that they provide are really interesting and people may not know that it's something that's available to them um that they could check it out and see if it's going to help them i've never I don't know how life coaching can help me. And I also don't know how hypnosis works. So I thought this would be a good time to bring that up. So let's bring them up. Hi. Hello. Hello. How's everybody doing? Doing great. Good. So can you tell everybody about your business? So at uh, Complete Holistic Coaching and Wellness, what we do, we are certified holistic wellness coaches, and we are also licensed to do guided meditations or to teach uh, meditations if you wanted to do it yourself. And we are also certified hypnotherapists, and we utilize rapid transformational therapy. Some may have heard of it as RTT. Uh, that's our modality. Okay. So... Wow. So we know how to contact you. We know that there's all kinds of ways to contact people. And at the end of the show, show we're going to tell them where they can find you and all that. So how how would somebody get started besides calling you and saying, hey, I want an appointment? How would all this go? So if someone was wanting to kind of research or get a little bit more information about the services that we provide, whether it be uh, coaching. The, the big one is the hypnotherapy. You just send us an email or you can send us a text or a phone call and say, Hey, I'd, I'd really like to know more. We do a 30 minute free consultation call. If the call goes over 30 minutes, that's fine. You know, we, we'll, we'll sit and answer questions for an hour because it's all about you. Just go ahead, reach out and then we'll find out if, you know, hypnotherapy would be the thing for you or maybe meditation or a holistic coaching session and you say yeah hey this would be great i'm I'm all for hypnotherapy you know based off of you know i have anxiety depression or i want to quit smoking or drinking then we send you the paperwork and get everything set up that way and we schedule you for your session and everything is pretty much streamlined right after that okay so Wow. There are so many ways that we could go here. So um, I know you're, you're open for it. Oh yes. So, so if I was to show up, I'd just say, Hey, I'm, I'm suffering from anxiety. (laughs) It's a complete package. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I'm, I'm suffering from anxiety. What would you suggest? So, oh, go ahead. No, you you ahead. No, All right. No, so no. if you suffer from anxiety, so one thing that we would bring up is one, you weren't born with anxiety. What was going on in your life before the anxiety really hit? And that kind of give you a, a minute to sit and think, well, I really didn't have my anxiety until I was, you know, at this age or I had this job. So your anxiety is a symptom of something 
We don't know what that is because, of course, everybody is different. I might have anxiety based off of one reason. Yours could be completely different. So that's when we would go in and get to the root cause. So you have your anxiety is as a symptom of what? So on our intake form was where we have a whole bunch of boxes where you can circle. You know, I have anxiety, depression. Let's say you did anxiety and we sat down and said, all right, tell us a little bit about this anxiety. How does your body feel when you start to feel the anxiety kick in? Do you, does, your, does your heart beat really fast? Do you sweat? What would be one of the triggers that kicks in your anxiety? So let's say my anxiety could be triggered by something completely different than yours. So it's not a, it's not a cookie cutter design. Oh yeah. Anxiety is anxiety. We're going to do this hypnosis. You know, you're better, you're better, you're better. No, it's, that's not how it goes. We sit down, everything is tailored toward you to find out what is actually the root cause of your anxiety. So, so do you guys also do, since you said holistic, mm -hmm. do you guys also do supplements and things like that as well? We do not, no. So holistic, we're just going at it at a natural approach as far as just your internal awareness, your awareness about the situations that you've dealt with in the past. Um, you know, anything that would, like Mike said, would be triggers just kind of that natural approach. We don't do supplements. We do have suggestions that we could provide, um, but we, that's not something that we supply. Okay. Yeah. You know, cause you, everybody has different thoughts when it comes to holistic, mm -hmm. you yes. know, you say holistic and they go, Oh, you shop at whole foods. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I got that the other day. Yeah. And, and that's not necessarily true. You know, no. we can't all afford that. Ron calls it whole check. So, which yes. is, oh my gosh, there. Um, yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, until we get a Trader Joe's, that's the best we got. <laughs> well, yeah. People don't understand Trader Joe's is not everywhere. No. Oh, Irene. We don't have Irene's, one there. Irene's over in Tokyo. Really? Yes. yes. Yeah. She's the one that owns oh, the um, paranormal. So, hello, Irene. So, here. Anthony asked, he said he asked. I think he wants their website. He wants to know what your website is so he can look at it. So oh, type that in there real quick. Yeah, I was gonna say go ahead and put that in. Oops. And Nigel is in the UK, isn't he, Denise? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Nigel. Hello, Nigel. And Anthony's in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I think Facebook user is probably Gary, so he's in. I would say it's probably Gary. Yep think so so i don't know why it always comes up as Facebook. i don't know either <laughs> yeah so we know our listeners pretty well at yeah least we know well a lot of to them. know to know who it is based on what they're where they're, at. <laughs> where they're at there you go and we're also live over on rumble so okay so so i come in i tell you i have anxiety we start going through the process how and i know it's tailor-made so mm -hmm. It's going to be different. What is it, How long does it take the average person to get through a program? A program or the session? So the session. Well, well, yes. I know this. How many sessions, I guess? That would depend on each individual client. Um, uh, most of the clients, you'll notice a difference right after the first session, about 95%. We will get in, get to the root cause do the reframe, get rid of any you know, negative beliefs or conflicting beliefs you had, and then do the transformation. After we do the session, you're provided with a personalized recording to listen to for a minimum of 21 days. Why 21 days? Because your mind, of course, learns by repetition. You're trying to change a habit, a new thought pattern. So let's say you wanted to brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand. You do it for 21 days, it now becomes a normal habit. You listen to the recording for 21 days. Everything that goes into your subconscious is now a habit. So we will find out probably about two weeks, you know, after the session, you've been listening to the recording. We're going to check up with you. Hey, how are you doing? Do you need anything changed on the recording? Do you say everything is going great? It's fine. I'm, I'm on that great path to, to getting better. 
perfect. If you did need something and go ahead and call us back, we, we can get you scheduled for another session or just change some wording on the recording. If you say, Hey, this take care of, could you maybe say this or this? Absolutely. That's, that's easy. So usually we can, we can get into the root cause, get it taken care of in one session, depending on what your presenting problem may be like a eating disorder would probably be about six sessions. Yeah, minimum of five. Minimum of five. And just real quick, I've tried to put our website out there, but it keeps telling me that the comment has failed to post. Okay. Let's see. What is the website? Uh, will be complete. Holistic. Coaching. And wellness.com. Perfect. There it goes. Look at that. So it went everywhere. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Perfect. So, so Anthony, there's the website. Do you, and you guys also have a podcast <clears throat> on yes, YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, no, on yes. Spotify. Spotify. On Spotify. On Spotify. We so, have a YouTube channel where you see my shining face <laughs> all the time on YouTube, and we do have the pot. Yeah, the podcast. Okay, and the is the podcast called the same thing? No, it's Go Deep or Go Home on Spotify by Complete Holistic Coaching. Right. But and when do you do your podcast? We attempt to get one out every Friday. We currently have 11 out there right now um, and working on getting the one for this week because we are a little bit behind on getting those out there. It's too nice. It is. It's gorgeous. Oh, I know. <laughs> We could sit in the studio and do the podcast or we could hang outside for a little bit now that it's not 108 degrees. <laughs> right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, so how long have you two been doing this? For a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and are you doing well with it? We are. Yes. It's it's going a little slow just because we're still a new business and we do mm -hmm. have a lot of stigma around the hypnosis. Um, it's unfortunate, but a lot of people don't realize that, you know, hypnotism and hypnosis is a natural state. So if you've ever gone to the grocery store, driven home and then don't remember the ride in between, that is hypnosis. That is a natural state. Your mind is putting you in a hypnotic state because either you're stressed out, you've had a lot going on, whatever it may be. And your mind's like, we need to give them a break. So you go on autopilot. So, you know, because you've taken that trip a million times before and it's an automatic thing for your mind, your subconscious mind to kind of kick in and take over. Uh, daydreaming is another natural state of hypnosis well i hope we don't go into hypnosis while we're driving right no. now we still don't know where we are all the time yeah there you go i forget half time when i walk into a room you know so. that irene yeah there's a stigma attached around anything that's outside the norm of things in holistic medicine absolutely absolutely Could and not. with her being in tokyo you know almost all their medicine <laughs> is very holistic yes yes Where, you know it's not a lot of hey i need to go to the doctor and and get medication it's going to be you like know, you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah like me tomorrow um yeah. you know be more like hey i need to go to this practitioner and have them either you know what well, i don't even know what it is acupuncture or acupressure or yeah. or yes. aromatherapy even um i don't so that and that brings me back to holistic. Sure. Are, what are some of the, I mean, are all the methods you guys use verbal or, or are they, how, how does it go? Yes, they yeah. are. So whether we do coaching, um, you know, and basically most of it is or with coaching, you lead it. So we just ask probing questions to really help you think outside the box. Um, and then we actually do a whole of body coaching, which is more about just your internal health in general, 
So like if you are looking to lose weight, there are signs for you to listen, but your body's telling you things over and over and over again. We've just gotten so used to not listening to what our body's telling us. So acid reflux, your body's saying, hey, I don't, I really don't like that, or you're having too much of it. And we just like, ah, we'll just push it. We'll take some Tums. We'll take the Prilosec. We'll take Nexium, whatever's out there. And, you know, just kind of push through it. So we kind of really delve in deep with that. Right, no, um, we really delve deep into that. So not, good night, Nigel. Good night, Nigel. <laughs> Late over there. Um, yeah. And then with the meditation, that's more us leading that. Um, and then with the, the hypnosis, hypnotherapy, uh, with RTT, it's it's pretty much led by you. We just ask those questions and guide you in the direction that's necessary. So when I was talking to Mike earlier today, he said that our, he was, I didn't want to ask too many questions because I knew that if I asked him and I already knew the answer, I probably wouldn't ask him again. Sure. <laughs> so, so what is the difference between RTT and uh, QHHT? Okay, so RTT was, it's uh, called Rapid Transformational Therapy. And before Tori and I actually got certified as RTT practitioners and hypnotherapists, we were sort of clients. Um, the developer of RTT is Marissa Peer. And she has over 35 or 40 years of hypnotherapy experience. And what she has done is taking, taking bits and pieces of all the other major uh, parts of uh, would be psychoanalysis, CBT, NLP, neuroplasticity, hypnosis and hypnotherapy. She's taken all those and kind of rolled them all into one modality in order to get to your root cause faster. So that's why it's rapid transformational therapy because you don't have time to sit for three or four more months to figure out what's going on. Let's peel the onion back. Let's talk about daffodils. Let's talk about this. No, you have come to us because you need, you need help. You want it right now. And with RTT and the, the tools that we have, we are able to basically get in to find out your root cause in a much faster manner and take care of it and then get you transformed back out into your uh, path of healing, mm -hmm. if you will. And then the Q, QHTT, I think is what it is. That's the yeah. quantum the healing. Quantum healing. Yeah. Uh, that goes more back into your past lives and it tries to tap into your knowledge from your past lives and tries to pull it over to uh, your current life as you know. Do you, here we go, here comes the paranormal part of this. Do you believe that past lives exist? I do. Yes. I do. Absolutely. 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 How, how can you prove or dis? I mean, how can you prove? I can that? you prove it? Yeah, that's the thing that I, I, I have trouble with. I'm a data person. <laughs> sure. No, that's no. great. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great question. Yeah. I think it's going to be more individually based. Um, feelings, you know, our intuition is huge. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, we tap into, I, I believe in spirits. I believe in, you know, there's more to, or, you know, on there's more on earth with us than we realize. And I think that sometimes when we can tap into that, mm -hmm. we can tap into those spirits. We can, you know, when we listen, um, that sometimes we can hear even their knowledge, but it's not what we do with, you know, and in, in our modality, but, you know, with the spirits, with all of that, you know, that is something that I feel that can help guide us at times. Is that so? To be honest, I've had trouble with with this past life thing. Sure, I've mm -hmm. had people read me and tell me, you know, hey, your past life, you were a nurse during the Great Fire in San Francisco. San Francisco. Why does everything goes back to some major event that mm -hmm. everybody knows about? Sure, you know, why is everybody's 
past life they were a princess or something like that or you know there's nothing no there's nothing sure. common absolutely yeah i mean there's definitely no you know definitely nothing to to prove that it is there i think it's more of just individual belief so anthony's just asking a a general question on past lives can past lives be broken down into a family line and time your life energy and a time your life energy with you yeah it's kind of basically your opinion sure so when we were going through for our our coaching sessions and learning the the meditation ours is based off of jose silva the ultra mind control method and we did a lot of this through mind valley and with one of the master classes and real quick with that I'll, mastermind um the mind control it's not about yeah we're not controlling other, anybody yet yeah anybody. it's not about controlling not yet. People, it's about controlling <laughs> you're, you're your own mind <laughs> just want to make yeah. sure that that's, that's yeah I mean, that'd be another stigma oh my gosh they're gonna make no 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 no, 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 no. we're not no. gonna make you just park like a dog or cluck like a chicken i promise and uh oh. the woman's name uh actually escapes me at this time but there was an older gentleman. I think he was in his seventies or eighties, and he was able to get into such a relaxed meditative state. Because when you meditate, you want to be within your alpha brain waves. And he was able to get into such a deep meditative state. He was able to find himself, or possibly, as, as you had asked, Anthony, a another relative mm-hmm. who was a piano player. This guy had never learned to play piano, so he had tapped into his, you know, past life, his former or someone that was on the same parallel to learn how to play piano. And within six months, he was at concert pianist level just by doing that through meditation. I grant he was able to really get in deep. So can it be done? Yeah. Cause we've, we've seen it, seen it. I have I been able to do it. I, I'm still trying to meditate to get the winning lottery numbers. <laughs> Again, people ask me that all the time. They go, Denise, you, you see spirits and all. I said, I'm not a psychic. Yeah, exactly. And, and even if I was, I think that the show charmed had yes. it right. Yeah. If you do anything for personal gain, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Or if it doesn't benefit. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> Which one? Future or past? Oh well, we got lots of time for that one. Yeah. So we have a, we have a question we've been asking everyone, and we will ask that of you guys later. Absolutely, um, okay. no worries. Yeah, it, it's a fun it's a fun question. It, it's thought provoking. I might have brought it up already. You past may, lives. Yeah. yeah, you may have, and maybe deja vu for you. It could be. <laughs> no. so, so, how long does it take to learn what you guys? have learned for your your business with the training itself it was six months but you know we are able to pull a lot from our life experiences right um you know places we've been you know we've always been somebody that you know people come and tell their troubles to and you know things like that so we've had a lot of experience even in that realm but for the the actual certification was six months yeah, I have this bad face. I really do. We walk into some place and I ask how you, how somebody in is. The Bahamas. And, and they will tell me exactly yeah. how they are. <laughs> well, and it's exactly. that energy and spirit mm-hmm. about you. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's just kind of how it is. It just they feel comfortable and just unleash. <laughs> and, and it's it I mean, that's kind I guess that's why I do this. Some are a little too comfortable. So, yes. Yeah, they'll tell you everything. They can get pretty deep. Yeah, she did. This one did. Yeah. Anthony also asked, it, you know, does DNA play a part in your past life experiences? Is going to be more that is a good question? Yes. So when we were, of course, going through the training in Mind Valley, we had an opportunity to do a meditation session with, her name was Reagan Hilliard, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But... It was this particular meditation. The, the ones that we teach you are about 15 minutes long because you don't have an hour to sit and take. You, you have stuff you got to get done. So this one was about an hour and 10 minutes long to where she would actually get you into the 
your nice, heavy, relaxed state and then start to have you, okay, this is your DNA. This is, you know, this might be your past life. This might be a particular energy block you had. So we're going to take it out. We're going to completely redo your DNA and get you back on track. So as far as DNA having something to play with a past life, I could, I would probably say yes. Yeah, DNA is pretty interesting. Back in the day, I'd taken some genetics classes and so. genetics is, it's pretty fascinating. It's interesting. Granted, it's all, it's kind of cut and dried, but what you're able to do with it and what you're able to make is, mm -hmm. is pretty fascinating. And you can repair your own DNA too, you know, through the, you know, uh, like Irene, you know, with the holistic approach, the herbal medicines, things like mm -hmm. that, you know, we really don't realize how important that is. You start talking about, you know, medications, they're synthesized, they actually mimic what our bodies make, but then our bodies realize, hey, this is not real. It's not a real substance. Mm -hmm that I can process because, you know, synthetic products are much more difficult to break down. And, you know, that can actually, you know, start to break the structure of your DNA. So by doing the more holistic approach, you're able to strengthen that DNA as well. It's well, it's kind of like when you put something in your body, that's not really food, mm -hmm. your body thinks it's like plastic. Yes. Not that it is plastic, but it tries to eject it and it can't. Absolutely. And, and that's where your DNA can get fried. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm making it really simple, but only because of the fact that that's how I talk. So, you know. No, completely oh, get no. that. Yes, Perfect. absolutely. And it, it's a great example. Well, I do technical stuff and I can't ever talk technical because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I do stuff. I just talk about it. And when I do get technical, I lose everybody. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but what made you guys want to get into this business? I've been waiting for that question. <laughs> okay. So. Do you want me to start? Yes. You All right. right so ahead. back in the day, okay, we, uh, I got a call from a friend of mine that he needed some help. Some friends of his, they were setting up uh, some like rapid COVID testing sites. The company was going way too fast. He needed some people to come in, help him set these things up, do the training. So for two years ish, we were corporate trainers. We were all over the United States dealing with, you know, local municipalities, setting up, uh, we, we learn more about setting up labs and training labs and, you know, the, uh, what the fire marshal says you can and cannot do. We learn a lot. That was pretty interesting. So we did that for two years straight, seven days a week, minimum of 14 to 16 hours a day. So it was, it was not, it was crazy. Now we met some awesome people along the way from some of the States, just some of the people that we had trained were just amazing. We're actually still friends with some of them today. They'll still say, Hey, what's going on? So as we started, as, as things expanded and we started to see some people work their way up the food chain mm -hmm. was where we really started to see the narcissism and toxicity. And it was, it was bad. It, it was horrible. And one of the main ones, who pretty much started the toxicity and I'm this, you know, just real bad. It, it was bad. He was actually a friend of mine who, let me go back a little further. So I did from 90 to 2001, I was in the army from, well, after that, I was a cop here for six years. Then I had a buddy of mine who talked me into being a private security contractor. So I worked for Triple Canopy for almost eight years in Iraq. So the guy who called up and said, hey man, I really need some help. I really need you to make this happen. Could you and your wife come and help? I was like, great. He was on my team in Baghdad. 
So this wasn't some corporate muckety muck that I just ran into and he turned into be this major narcissist and backstabber. No, this was a guy that I knew that I ran with in the streets. Right. Um, so when we started to see that happen, like, you've got to be kidding me. Well, his boss was actually a former security contractor as well. We knew a lot of the same people. He was ex army. And we really started to see as people moved up the food chain, that, that ego, that titles, that just the sense of entitlement was horrible. And, you know, we really started to feel it to where we just get up in the morning. The only thing that really keep you going is getting up and, Hey, we're going to see these cool people. We're going to meet some, like I said, we met some awesome people. So that's kind of what kept you going. Well, toward the end of it, you know, after we kind of had enough of the toxicity and just, you name it, the hostile work environment was absolutely insane. So we're sitting in Omaha, which is where the, where the corporate office was. We're sitting in the hotel room. We're getting, we're finishing up some paperwork before we're getting ready to come back home. We were, you know, we're, oh, we're not doing training anymore. We don't need this. Yeah, you don't need that anymore because we started holding you guys accountable because you asked the question. Don't ask a question you don't want to know the answer to. So hold someone accountable. You get nailed for it. So now we are burnt out. She'd actually had a breakdown at Saugus. Yes. She, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. I come out, come out of the back. She is sitting on the couch just in tears. I haven't seen, we've been together. I'm not 20. a crying person. Yeah, either. no. So like this, this isn't cool. It's like, I'm done. Yeah. I just, I'm mentally, Could, I'm just, I'm just burnt out. Yeah. We, we take the letters of resignation uh, probably three or four times. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't want to, the HR at the time was absolutely useless. I apologize to anybody on here. If you are HR, yes. I'm sure you do an outstanding job, but when you're a buddy, of somebody else and they're like we're going to make you a director of hr because you were a bartender and you made me a great old-fashioned mm. uh, they yeah. were not certified in hr we're they like, were not oh my gosh yeah. but that's a whole other ball of wax <laughs> yep. so anyway here we are we're sitting in in omaha we're in the hotel room doing the paperwork now the corporate office was literally right across the street and you could feel mm. i could feel the tension is it you could cut it with a butter knife, just the aggression and everything's like, oh my God. So we never went over there. We did everything online. If we had to take care of something else downtown, we went ahead and did it. Well, we're sitting there and Tori's flipping through Facebook. And all of a sudden there's this ad by Vishen Lakiani, and it's for the Silva Ultramind meditation. Hey, you know, you can get calm, you can do this, you can do that. And we're like, you know what? Let's let's try it. Let I mean, what can why not? <laughs> right. We were doing the affirmations and everything else to try to keep that positivity. It's like, let's do it. So we downloaded the audio book and went through all of the all the drills that they had you do. And within, I'd probably say for me about a day and a half, the aggression was gone. I got up, I walked out into the main area of the hotel room. And it felt clear. It was like, okay, may maybe there's something to this. Because if you'd have talked to me about five, six years ago and said, you're going to teach meditation and be a hypnotherapist, mm -hmm. I, I would have laughed in your face. I said, yeah, no, you don't know me that well. Maybe I didn't know me that well. He's also Italian. So yeah, so, yeah pardon the hands mix. and all that stuff. <laughs> there you go. I'm not Italian, but I talk with my hands. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you have to. It's, it's you know, it's the it's emphasis. It's that's, word emphasis. That's one of those deals you always, you know. Absolutely. Exactly. I, if I sat on my hands, I'd be I'd be, I'd be boring. When, mm -hmm. Well, a lot of things that you've said during this, and I know you're not done, but so much of this sounds like what we experience within the paranormal with people. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have narcissists. Yep. We have people who think that they're better than everybody else. We have people who've gotten raised up for just being on a TV show. You're not any smarter than anybody else, but it sounds very similar. In fact, at the paranormal conference you were at, there were some people there that had been on a TV show 
really nice guys, no more knowledgeable than me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but they're likable, you know, and maybe they say what they want to say. Yeah. Or maybe they yeah. don't. They actually, most of these people say what the network wants them to say, mm -hmm. not what, what we want to say, what we want right. to hear. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes. and Anthony, Anthony. Absolutely. Yeah. the way that you deal with people is basically the way that, that you are. But mm -hmm. you're also talking about clearing a space. Yes. It may be the spaces in your head, but, or in your body, but mm -hmm. it's the same as somebody going in and saying, Hey, I got to sage this area. Yes. Oh. I need to cleanse it. It's the same thing. So we are within the realm of the paranormal, but being normal. Yes. So <laughs> makes sense. And, and we're not, you know, we used to live just down 29. So Carl lives not too far from Omaha now. Yeah. We yeah. used to live in Kansas City, so we know the area in which you were at. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how you were able to get around downtown because it's always under construction. Always. Right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Always. <laughs> so we know that. So That's a great food in Omaha. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and if you can't find great food, you can always find a Runza down the street. That's right. <laughs> That's true. That's, That's right. Oh my God. That's true. So, so you 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 walked out into the hotel room or out of the hotel room and into the lobby, and you felt like a weight's been lifted off of you, and yes. everything felt. So, where did you go from there? So, we your course continued on with the meditation. We're like, okay, the end of my you know, fifteen minutes a day, morning and evening, and then we kind of do one in the afternoon. So Tori went ahead. She got into Mind Valley, and we joined Mind Valley. Okay, this there there is something to this. Let's let's give it a shot. And that was where she had found because if you're in Mind Valley, they have what they call little quests. You know, here's a here's a 28 day quest or a 30 day quest on whatever you may want to do, whether it's intermittent fasting or you know enhancing your business. Well, Tori found. Marissa Peer's rapid transformational therapy for abundance, like rapid transformational therapy. What's this? So we went ahead, signed up for one of the quests and it was really amazing. So we were clients of hypnotherapy before the opportunity to get certified fell on our laps, which was pretty interesting. So we kind of followed through with still with the meditation and then did the, the, the hypnotherapy, which she, we were doing, a, you get put in hypnosis, what, like a couple times a week. Yeah. Which is fine, but it's to help get rid of blocks. You know, what happened back in your childhood could be major you know, hurdles. A, a major hurdle. Yeah. So it was really interesting and which kind of made me a believer. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, like I said, if you'd asked me five, six years ago, I'd have, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. So with the hypnosis mm -hmm. part, can it take you back to a time that that something happened and you can relive it? You won't relive it. You'll like we're like you're looking at us right now on a screen. It's mm -hmm. like you're a third person in it, but you're never reliving it. Okay. You, but you, yes, you can go back to those particular. You scenes. only review. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, a big one is uh, fear of public speaking. So we go ahead, do the induction, get you down into hypnosis, and then we'll take you back to three scenes. And we'll say, okay, you're getting ready to, as I count you back, you're going to be going into a scene that has all to do with why you had the fear of public speaking. Uh, on five, you're getting smaller, shorter, three, you know, four, three, two, and then one. A scene is coming to you right now that has everything to do with why you have the fear of public speaking. And as I tap your forehead, a scene is coming to you vividly and very bright right like now, just like you turned on your TV screen and then hit. Where are you? Is it daytime or nighttime? Are you inside or outside? Are you alone or with someone? So what are you feeling? hearing and most of all what are you experiencing and this is where so for the fear of public speaking we've heard well i'm in my grade school okay 
tell me a little bit more about grade school. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in the classroom and all the kids are laughing at me. Okay, well, describe to me a little more about the reason why these kids are laughing at you. Well, we're reading aloud and I pronounced a word wrong and all the all my classmates are now laughing at me and I feel embarrassed. So there's, there's a key word, you feel embarrassed. Well, what has your teacher done? All oh, my teacher's laughing with him and is still making fun of me. Okay, mm-hmm. there, there's your first one. Yeah. So you go back to your other scene, same thing. I was forced, I'm in the school play, I'm on stage, I got my lines wrong, everyone's laughing at me. Now I feel embarrassed, I don't, you know, I, I feel ashamed, I have no self-esteem. So as you run back to the scenes, you'll see, okay, everything started back when you were in grade school. Well, now we need to say, well, you're not in grade school anymore. You're a 35 or 40 year old adult. You, you're, you're not back in there anymore. You don't need their approval. You don't need the approval from your teacher. You don't need the approval from your classmates. You can read perfectly well. You've been through college or you've read many books or you speak aloud right now. So right There is no reason for you to have any fear of standing up in front of people because you're positive. You know exactly what you're doing. And then we just roll right on through that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that every day that they're out in public, they're public speaking. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And that's true. Well, I'm afraid of public. You do it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do it every meeting that you have at work or, or even when you're just talking to somebody to the person at McDonald's taking your order. It's public. Yes, absolutely. That is true. Yeah. I've never had a fear of public speaking. I, I do have a, I have a fear of public reading because I have, I'm dyslexic, but that's a whole different problem. But that's why I, I mean, I'm not reading anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, figured a way around that. So, so in my case, my thing is, you know, could it take me back to when my dad was murdered and the day that he was murdered to where I could re-see or re, re-know yeah, re-read. what I know, mm-hmm. you know, validate what I know? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Get clarity. Yes. Absolutely. And how far back can we go? Can, you know, can we go back to the crib or the cradle? Yeah. Go go for it. No, I said the I, womb, but yeah, right yeah. on ahead. I'm My sorry. Mike said uh, we can go back all the way into the womb. So we've mm-hmm. had we've had people, you know, it's dark, I can't see anything. So what we say is like, I want your ears to be open. What do you hear? And then like, oh, I hear I hear some muffled sound, you know. And then they kind of go in and like, oh, my mom's telling me, you know. I'm, I'm killing her, you know, just, this has been the worst pregnancy and she's killing me. You know, we don't, we don't really realize how important it is, you know, what we're saying (laughs) while they're in the womb. And we've had clients that have gone all the way back to the womb where they're actually still growing. Oh, Hmm. that's, that's weird. It's wild. It's wild because you're going through, it's like, okay, what do you see? What are you experiencing? It's dark. I don't have anything. You're like, yeah. <laughs> we're like now you hear is and then you go yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So now what are you what are you hearing mm-hmm. and then like oh i hear this like oh, okay cool and now there's right. been others where they see darkness and they were locked in a closet or locked in their room or something along those lines so mm-hmm. i mean it's it's more than just that but yes so we, we've had people go that far back i know a girl that was actually locked in the closet for a long time and it was on the news they lived across the street from us. So I'd hate to know what's in her, her thought process on things. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> I know you have. Okay. To. I got a question. Yes, Carl. Okay. You have to do all this hypnosis with the person with you. No, sir. Live, not a virtual. We can do it virtually okay. as well. And it works. Oh, just- really? Yes, yes, sir. It works just as well as in okay. person. Okay. Well, when you said you had to tap on their forehead, mm-hmm. do you have a keyword that wakes them up? So whenever we go, instead of saying when I tap on your forehead on our microphone, I'll say whenever I hit the microphone or we have mm-hmm. or a snap, a snap. You know, whenever you hear my finger snap, it's coming to your, it's coming to you right now. Oh, we have okay. Dog, I have a clicker. Yeah, like you train your dog it. with. And yeah. Yeah. 
We had those things. They were toys back in the day. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, so nowadays, you, you wouldn't give a kid anything metal to do. <laughs> right. So do you have a lot of clients yeah. that do it virtual? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, have clients in Minnesota, Tennessee, West Virginia, West Virginia. There's another state. I had one in Colorado, Colorado New York. Mm -hmm. The West okay. Virginia one is surprising. Mm -hmm. But you know, I could see where you would have more out of state than in state. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because you know, yeah, is there some weird person watching your office to say, "Here's those weird people going in there"? Because you know, at the paranormal conference. Tori, I don't know if you were there, but there was a guy outside with a bullhorn um, telling all of us we were going to hell. Oh, no <laughs> well, I did not know that. Yeah, well, I mean, you I mean, couldn't was there. Was there. Said yeah. On Saturday time. only, he wasn't there on oh, Sunday. Oh, you heard it was wah, wah, Oh, my goodness. You, you couldn't understand wow. it, but. I could hear him. I knew what he was saying. Well, his signs. And <laughs> Plus, he had signs out there. Yeah. But if you guys, you got in there too early. My we did. We must have. <laughs> So, wow. so, yeah, and, and the thing is, is was there anything in there that you saw that we were all going to hell for? No, no, not no, not really. Well, I mean, that's something that's that really is just intriguing to me. If you go back, I mean, to the 1800s, you know, you had mystics, you had all these people. Hi, Susan. Um, Susan and Mike. What's that? I said Susan and Mike. That's her, husband's name. That's her husband. Oh, awesome. Hello. Hi, Mike. <laughs> um, but, you know, they utilize a lot of this. Da Vinci, he tapped into his, you know, his his natural state and med through meditation, through, you know, things that he would see because he would get into such a deep meditative state that he could come up with these creations. You know, a lot of the inventors back in those days, same thing. Um, Tesla. Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. That. yeah. It's, it's TV, really yeah. interesting, but it's not something that the media today is going to tell you about because they're like, they don't want you to go that direction because we've been filled with so much media. We've been filled with so much BS, you know, because our minds mm -hmm. learn by repetition. Yep. So this is where marketing comes into play. Whether you're, you know, um, Oh, what is it? It's a, um, not a doomsday, but the um, oh, conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, theorist, whatever that may be, you know, our government does things, you know, and, and even when it comes to the money in the pocket and all that fun stuff, you know, this is where we were talking about medications earlier. How many times in one uh -oh. show in the U S do you see an advertisement for some type of medication? Okay, at least four. Show. Yeah. Minimum. At least, you know, per show. Yeah, absolutely. And That's what is that sense. doing? Well, <laughs> not necessarily our conscious mind. We're like, oh, God, not this commercial That's again. Right. Our conscious mind. But subconsciously, <laughs> and then you're thinking, it's like, okay, well, maybe it's, let's say it was for blood pressure. It's like, oh, my, my blood pressure, you know, my mm. heart's racing a little bit. And then your subconscious, mm. you're like, oh, well, maybe I need to check with my doctor about this medication. Yep. And so it's a subliminal thing that that it's they're they're amazing at what they do, you know, and then they keep pushing and pushing, yep. and pushing. Mm -hmm. So they're very, very smart. They know how the mind works. And it's unfortunate, but that's it's part of it. Well, bothers me. She, Denise watches the uh, soaps and the commercials on. I mean, there's nothing but drug commercials. And I said, you know, oh, the yeah. idiots that watch this stuff. Mm -hmm. After a while, they're just gonna they're gonna believe they got all this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're, yeah. That's what they're going yeah. for. You know, yeah. that's who they're catering to. Yeah, I'm it's grateful. Slow. I think nothing that's on yeah. any of those commercials. And I have a fast I don't know how they watch button. it anyway, but there you go. Well, that's good. I working from home, it's always been my co-worker for all these years. Mm -hmm. And I've been working from home since 2007. So oh, long before everybody's been doing it. Doing it. So those are my coworkers. That's that background noise that I need. You know, so mm. people don't get it. I can't just sit here in the quiet. No. But with seven people living in my house, there's not a lot of quiet, but there's a lot of none. There's some noise that I need to, to drown out so I can think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's how I do it. I don't listen to the commercials. I hardly mm. listen to the show. Yeah. But I apparently I've been listening to Days of Our mm. Lives for 58 years 
And I know who the person is. I don't have to see them. I can hear it and not even really be listening, but I hear it. Yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And I know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I probably still do. And I haven't seen it in, I'm behind three months. I got you. (laughs) So, but yeah, I mean, I just started watching Young and the Restless again yesterday. Nice. And, And I'm already caught up. It doesn't take long. <laughs> and what's bad is that I'll tell him what's going to happen long before it happens. Before it happens. He's like, oh my it's God. Predictable. Yeah, it gets predictable. Well, yeah. Like, like I really care, right? <laughs> right. That's uh, she tells me this stuff, and I'm like, oh, no. I don't know how many times I told you this, but I could care less. Hey. <laughs> you you got to watch Days of Our Lives when people are I guess you need possessed. somebody to talk to. I don't know. <laughs> But hey, Virgil. But, but again, you're right. I you know I know that there is subliminal stuff in every one of these messages. I know that when I'm in Walmart, there is something subliminal coming across those speakers that I can't hear. That maybe if I brought my recorder in with me and taped it, maybe I'd hear the hear it in there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and they do. They tailor the music to the people who are shopping. A lot of those places do. So like our generation, you know, 80s, you know, that kind of stuff. They're going to play that, you know, whether it's country or a mix of all 80s. They don't care. They're going to they're going to tailor it to those shoppers and it puts you in a good mood. So then what do you do when you're in a good mood? Oh, well, you know, I really don't need this, but let me go ahead and get it and put it in my cart anyway. It really puts you, They, I mean, they've done, like I said, they've done an amazing job when they've come to all of this marketing and subliminal you know, influence. Mm-hmm. You know, what's really oh, yeah. funny is for me, if they play Tom Petty, I'm out of that store. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm in Florida and I know that he's from Gainesville, oh. but I can't stand his voice. She just found that out. I just found that out. Yeah. And I was like, crap. Cause Kansas city <laughs> loves Tom Petty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really? And, and I tell everybody I can't stand him. And mm-hmm. they look at me like you're crazy. In fact, there will be some comments that will come across pretty soon, <laughs> hating on me because I can't stand Tom Petty. But, but I tell you, I was never. I can't. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that's a fanatic, so I totally get it. Yeah. I totally so, get it. and I, I mean, I, I also also say, you know, I can't stand Pink Floyd, and my grandson's name is Ruby Floyd. You know, and you go, what? Yeah, you made that association. Yeah. My, no, my daughter named her son Floyd because she loved Pink Floyd. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, Virgil. But yeah, this is, <laughs> and there you go, Carl. Uh-oh. He's blaming you on smoking. Now we got one that needs to stop. Uh-oh. Subliminal. There you go. There you- <laughs> so, is, do you think there, you know, you're talking about, um, Sleep All In was my favorite because I just saw this. <laughs> oh, to the ground. oh. So, I mean, I can get really crude on this, and I'm not going <laughs> to. I have to live in Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> at this point. Definitely top 10 worst voices ever. <laughs> I don't like the Beatles either. I don't like the Rolling Stones. He's up there with Bob I'm, Dylan. And, and, oh, well. So Dylan. needless to say, I'm, I'm going to piss off everybody if I keep talking about what I don't like. So I love meatloaf. Oh, there you go. So awesome. you know, who can go wrong with with the songs that last 10 minutes? Right. You know. Yeah. He was Absolutely. the king of those. Yes. Oh, yeah. And they're great. But um so You're talking about so controversy <laughs> mm-hmm. and, you know, theories. Mm-hmm. Is there, are there any theories that people have come to you guys with on your hypnosis that you, that were just ridiculous? Uh, yes. I, I had, I had one potential client who had asked about weight loss and said, hey, you know, I'm, I've heard about hypnosis for weight loss. I've had some friends do it. And of course, explain to this individual, hey, you know, it's I cannot make you do anything you do not want to do. Your subconscious still knows right from wrong. Mm-hmm. You're going to remember the session. 
And you know what? I, you know, Mike, I, I had faith that you can help me lose this 10 pounds that I really want to lose. But I think that once you have me in hypnosis, you're going to tell me to kill my husband. And I'm like, wow. That's not, that, well, I was like, yeah. well, I was like, well, my first question was, and I, and I didn't ask it. I just thought it. <laughs> Do you I really want yeah. to? Exactly. <laughs> Do you really want to kill your husband? Because if, if that's your motive, I allow me to suggest you refer you to another hypnotherapist because yeah. I, or somebody, completely well, or somebody completely different. I just, yeah, just chief of police. Wow. <laughs> yeah. it's like, and that's what a lot of people, mm -hmm. they have a huge misconception about as well. Like, you know, stage hypnotism versus hypnotherapy. So when you go to a stage hypnotist, you know, you're going to do some silly stuff, right? You're going to mm. use your shoe as a, a cell phone. You know, you're going to look like know, a chicken. Yeah. You're, yeah. It's just whatever mm. it may be, whatever they're going to do that day. But your mind is already open to that. So you're going to be more suggestible for those mm -hmm. type mm. of suggestions. When you come to us for hypnotherapy, it's, you know, you're coming to us for therapy. So, you know, it's going to be a completely different setting and you're going to be open to an extent. And like Mike says, that's where your mind kind of puts that boundary of how far you're going to go. Cause you're like, well, all right, well, if we could, you know, I'd love a Ferrari, you know, just yeah. put that in my driveway, you know, give me a million bucks, something, mm -hmm. but we don't do, you know, we, we can't do that because we go at it as the, uh, that hypnotherapy as that therapy to assist. Yeah. So. Cause if we could, tell you to do whatever we every single hypnotherapist would have a house on the golf and five Bentleys. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Anthony, yeah. I couldn't agree more, sir. Food or song best. <laughs> ah, no, no, Virgil, you're not banned. <laughs> <laughs> so, He's working on it. <laughs> uh -oh. So, um, well, we, we warned you there'd be one. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least one, right? Okay, so when you go to put somebody into hypnosis, you mm -hmm. explain that hip, hypnotherapy is different than hypnosis. Yeah. Even though it's still all part of the same thing. Yeah. What? What is the? Oh no, I don't think that's the right question. I think the question I want to ask is. What can we get hypnotherapy for? You know, you've already said quit smoking, weight loss, things like that. What about actual health issues like AFib or stomach IVF, IVF, cancer, IVF, infertility, yep, fertility, uh, ED, erectile dysfunction, um, that's joint a, issues? Uh, I say that's a big one. That's probably not. <laughs> <a problem. laughs> Or a small and one. Well, there's a problem. Just say, and we're wearing the right color, just say. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it depends. You know, if you walk outside and look at their truck, then you'll know if they have ED. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> if it's jacked up with all these different spoilers yeah. and stuff, you know they're compensating uh, for something. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So <laughs> just say. to kind of add to your question, Court, we can do it for pretty much anything. So we've had... You know, people are, hey, can you improve my golf swing? Yes. Jack Nicholas used a hypnotherapist. Tiger Woods started mm -hmm. using the hypnotherapist when he was 13 to get him in his focus uh, whenever he would get ready to, to play. So Eddie, Eddie, was it Eddie Hall? Eddie Hall, yes. Eddie Hall, the gentleman who just did the world record deadlift of 1100 pounds half a ton half a ton they wow. asked him what did Please. you do of course of course you prepared you trained he went to a hypnotherapist mm -hmm. and that's how he was able to lift that weight they gave him basically gave him kind of a trigger so that as mm -hmm. soon as he'd come up and he'd reach down and grab the bar as soon as he touched the bar the bar became a car mm -hmm. that he had to lift off of his kids mm -hmm. so oh, he, wow. yes he used hypnotherapy yeah. so it can be used for Anything. Many, many, many things. Anything. We've had OCD. We've had, um, oh, what was another one? Um, just 
the we had a, a young lady that could not have intimate relationships with her significant other mm. and, and it was due to something that happened at school but i mean it just changed everything we can do it to help with birthing if you're getting ready getting ready to have a baby and you want to have a more natural approach to that we can do that as well mm -hmm. it's just about anything that you can think of the only thing that we are unable to do is if you already have a type of psychosis, whether it's schizophrenia, anything along those lines, we are unable to work with that just because we're not sure which person we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so that can get uh, to be a challenge. Um, so we do, you know, suggest that you go to a psychiatrist for that. Now, with that being said, there has been um, a case that I've heard that um, a young lady ended up being sexually abused by her father and his friends. Damn. And due to that traumatic experience, she created seven different people because mm -hmm. of those situations that mm -hmm. she experienced. Um, electric shock, that was, that was an oh. old um, antiquated way um, that really didn't mm -hmm. provide any <laughs> any assistance to anybody. It was more of, oh, let's just try this and see what happens. Um, I had an aunt <laughs> on my, oh, on yeah, my dad's yeah. side uh, who actually right. was provided electric shock therapy and it just made things so much worse. Yeah. yeah. It usually ends up making the person soup. Yes. Yes. Or more psychotic or whatever that trigger right. was. It just intensifies that. Yeah, it's it's not something you want to hear. I mean, a lot of the places that we investigate, <laughs> there's some of those places where that occurred mm -hmm. that we oh, go to investigate that, and it's like, I just can't even imagine mm -hmm. that. I mean, you know, it's it's just horrible. <laughs> and I mean, I know that we all probably have family members yes. that were in the early or the late 1800s. Well, about time the electricity came into play. Mm -hmm. You know that somebody was trying to figure it out. And so, yeah. I mean, it was going on until the 70s. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, we can thank Geraldo for bringing some of that to light back yes. in, in the early or the late 70s. 70s. Yeah. So that's sad. So that's not something that's readily practiced anymore. I mean, it's yeah. torture. But, you know, yeah, it is. It is torture. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony also asked, can you utilize um, hypnosis? to reach your inner child. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One of the biggest things it's used for, correct? Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. And there's and there's something that we do there. We have multiple tools that we use when we're dealing with trauma and issues, especially with the past. And we do something called um, the inner child, well, inner child, but also um, the parent that you never had, things like that. So we're able to utilize those tools to help you move forward. Um, so, yeah. How do you utilize, okay, so you said the parent you never had, what do you, what do you mean? So basically, so if I was in a scene with my younger self, cause we do go back to kind of help merge the child. That's what I was trying to think, sorry, upgrading merge the child, the child upgrading the child, merging the child. So when you go back to a scene and we finish all of that. We have you go back to like your childhood home, you know, depending if it's appropriate for that particular individual and that particular scenes and situation. We take you back to your old childhood home. If you've moved around multiple times, pick your, pick your favorite one. You enter the house. We have you visualizing what it looked like, the smells, all of that. And then we go to your bedroom. We have you open the door and you as a younger child is sitting on that, on that bed. When we get, when we get you, you know, to sit by the child or whatever, um, you know, you're going to give praise to that child. You know, you've endured so much, but look at where we are today. We've survived, you know, we've gotten through all of this. And then you reach out and you, you know, you, we do a little bit more, but then you hug the child. And then what we do is like, you know, now you're the parent that you didn't have, or you're, you know, whatever, whatever it was that they needed at the time, you are now that person, the older you is that to that younger you. And then we can actually merge, you know, once we kind of get through that, get all of that resolved, 
we actually have them visualize the child kind of going into themselves again. So you're always going to be that parent to that child. You're going to provide that child love and continue on. Is this like a form of time travel? No, not really, because you've already been in the scenes. So it's, it's more, you're just dialoguing with yourself just in different time frames. But it's, you've already been there and you already know how you were at that age. So it's just kind of tapping back into that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, your subconscious is actually, your, your subconscious is going to answer when it goes to get into the scene mm -hmm. anyway. So that's why hypnosis is so awesome because it's going to be your subconscious, not your conscious mind, which can deflect. Mm -hmm. Anthony, that's a great question. There was a, I can't remember his name. There was a gentleman back in the 80s I think, or 90s. Um, he was on Oprah, I remember. And he was big on writing letters to your child self. And yes. any time that you take anything out of your mind and put it on paper is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got so much going on in your mind. John Bradshaw. John Bradshaw, thank you so much. Sorry. He's, he was really big into writing letters to your child self. And it does, it makes you more aware. And it and once you write it, it just kind of <laughs> out your mind so that you can kind of move forward. Absolutely. Right. And then Gary. Uh, let's see. Uh, you do your podcast on Spotify. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Of course, that's uh, like a radio show and everything. What all do you talk about? on that podcast on Spotify? A little bit of everything. Everything. So we've also <laughs> right now, I think with our 11 episodes, we have rules of the mind, you know, kind of why our minds do what it, you know, do what they do. Um, letting go of your past. Letting go of your past. Habits. Uh, we got one about who we are and kind of how we got into this. <laughs> right. Um, I can't remember which ones there are now. Yeah. We've, I know there's only 11. Yeah. We'll talk about a good past. past. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Your mind works. I know some of our future ones about boundaries, you know, um, relationships. Triggers, relationships, things like that as well. Yeah. Okay. Has, has it been helping your business to do those podcasts? It has. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and ours is just audio, audio, not video on, on our podcast. So, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is pretty, this is pretty inexpensive and it, it when you download it you can download audio only and put it on spotify oh gosh. Yeah. Or, or anchor yeah. fm and you can do it at the same time you do a live video really you can do it a live audio on spotify at awesome. the same time. Real. thank you for that i appreciate that yeah and of course you've got chat after and all the that. show's over i'll talk to you both about it Yes, sir. Appreciate yes, that. Thank that, you. Yeah. And and it's pretty inexpensive. Nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we're all about. <laughs> yeah, we're all about the inexpensive. Inexpensive, absolutely. So, um, Tori, what did you used to do before? <laughs> I mean, I know the part about when you guys were setting up the the clinics and all that. So, mm -hmm. what were what was your life experience before? So um, I grew up military. My dad was in the Air Force, uh, old school Air Force. Um, we traveled around the U.S. Um, so, you know, really it kind of got brought me out of my shell because if you go to a new yeah. place and you can't talk to people and you can't do things, you're kind of stuck in a corner and by yourself. So that really kind of helped me. Um, I had been married prior, um, divorced, and then met my my man today, my awesome husband. And, um, you know, we being him being military as well, you know, had odd jobs, you know, whether it was in finance, whether, you know, it was Home Depot, wherever we traveled, you know, for his job, I would just have to find something locally. So, you know, it's one of those, you kind of took what you had available. So um, just a wide, you know, a vast, uh, career as far as things that I did when we traveled uh, from place to place. Um, and then, like Mike said, that's kind yeah. of when, you know, the, I was about to say the name, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our corporate <clears throat> training position came about and, you know, as Mike had stated earlier, so. 
Anthony has another good question. He goes, how does your program play with free will of the person's mind? How does the program play into free will? I mean, as far as like hypnotherapy? Yeah. Or My guess is he's going with, is it overriding free will? No. No. Yeah. If you come to us, say, I don't know, somebody says, I want to come and I want to stop smoking. Okay. Are you ready to listen to the recording? Are you ready to, you know, take extra measures in, you know, finding alternative things to do, you know, to kind of break those habits? So if you're not invested in it, it's it's not going to work. Because we will have people, yeah, we'll have people that, you know, oh, I listened to the recording for three days and then, you know, life got in the way and they fall back into old habits. You know, habits take a minimum of 21 days to break. Yep. And that's why we suggest listening to the recording for a minimum of 21 days. I have a client that still listens to it to this day. January. And we did it. Uh, we January. had their, yeah, their yeah. session in January. And they stated that it just helps them get in the right mind frame for the day. And, you know, they've been very successful with it. How long is each recording or are they different for each person? Um, it can vary, but we try to keep no it around 20 minutes. No more. max. Yeah. People, they lose, yeah. They lose. They're gone. Yeah. So, right. Absolutely. I find, I find this really interesting because, you know, my mom had used hypnosis, hypnotherapy okay. to quit smoking. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. I didn't know it. Then my 45th birthday hit and she started smoking again. She used me as her uh, as her, her catalyst. Excuse. Excuse. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Catalyst is a nice way to say it. Yes. Um, but does that happen to a lot of people that just something triggers them to just completely revert? Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. it could be something similar. Maybe she saw something happening with you that happened to her when she started smoking or something was going on you know, in the family realm at the time that re- reminded her and set that trigger off. Absolutely. And your mind, your mind will go back to what's familiar. Mm-hmm. So as you're trying to stop and trying to, to work your way, we had like had one client like, man, I feel great. This is awesome. I get up in the morning and I'm wonderful. I feel like I, conquered I, feel the day. Like I can <laughs> conquer the day. And then something triggers, something triggered. It's like, well, no one likes me happy anymore. So I'm just going to go back to my old self because your mind's going to go back to what's familiar. Hmm. Or like you can't. That's keep, why habits are so keep, hard to break. That's why, yeah. Habits are, you know, really hard to break. You know, stay, stay on top of it. Stay out of that negative loop. Mm-hmm. Because we'll have anywhere from 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts in a day. 84% of those thoughts are negative. Of those 84% thoughts, 90% of them are recurring. So if you're already negative, you have yourself in a negative thought pattern all the time from the time you wake up. And that's why it's really hard to break what we call the negative programming Mm -hmm. to where, well, I'm never going to amount to anything because my third grade teacher told me I was an idiot and laughed at me when I pronounced the word wrong. So now you have someone that's 30 some years old who thinks I will never be able to own my own business, climb up the corporate ladder because my teacher said I was too stupid. There's your negative programming and it just stays. So Anthony, absolutely. It can definitely be reset. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, it can. So so for anybody who's listening that didn't see the question. (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Anthony asked, can can your mind be reset from a message that's already planted in the mind? And you guys basically answered that question is, yeah, we got you got the reset button and it'll, so they can basically, they, they go back to their bad habit. My mom, if she had a recording, she could have went back to that recording and it would have set her mind back to where to reset it. Yes. Go, go back to quitting smoking again. Absolutely. Yes. And she might still be here as opposed to being dead. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah. She had COPD. Okay. okay. She died in 2017. Um, there's 
you know, but there's a lot of things, you know, like I said, I can only go back on experiences that other people have had. I don't think I've ever been hypnotized. No, I don't. And I know I never did. <clears throat> well, actually, one of the doctors at the Lemon Center in Kansas City, I saw him once and he gave me a recording and all this. It wasn't a personal recording. It was a recording he told me to listen to oh, every day to put myself into a meditative state. And I still have it somewhere. But it was to help fight migraines. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. And so um, I was in a I was in a cycle of where I couldn't get rid of the migraines. But yes. everything that he was saying, it's like, mm -hmm. this all makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel the need to pay for something that, you know, I already knew. I mean, sure. not because I'd been having hypnotherapy, but because I just knew that. I just needed to put my mind in, at ease and hopefully it would go away. Absolutely. Because um, I was not, I'm not big on, I can't take medication for migraines anymore because I have a heart condition. Mm. So you have to be really careful. Mm. Absolutely. So it was all, you know, I thought it was, <laughs> I'm now seeing a correlation between what you sure. guys are saying mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. what he said in the limited time I had with him at the Lemon Center. Now I'm going to have to go look that up and see if if he was doing the same thing. Yeah, that would be really interesting because Mike actually, just to your to add to your point, um, Mike had a client who had severe neck pain. She thought it was from an accident that she had. Mm -hmm. And Mike, I'll let you. Yeah, she had a. She was in an accident. Figured, well, you know, I've had the neck pain. I didn't know how long ago the crash was. It was in the '90s. And she'd been going to physical therapy and just couldn't get any, any relief from the neck pain. And we figured, well, maybe she had negative programming, had a chiropractor or a physical therapist sit there and say, you know, you're just going to have to live with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, have it all the time. You just need to let it suck it up and drive on. And got her down into uh, hypnosis, started in with the scenes. And well, all the scenes had to deal with, her guilt of not being there when her son committed suicide. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's what I, and I, I about fell out of the chair. This yeah. was, you know, one on, you know, virtual one. And she said, I could, not what I expect. I was waiting yeah. to say my physical therapist told that's me, he's like, yeah. I'm right. Here. And then she yeah. said that. I'm like, well, okay. So that, that is, is a weird hmm. story, but very appropriate. Well, right. this is something too. A lot of there have been studies done and that show seventy-five percent of all illnesses that people have, seventy-five percent mm -hmm. are all functional. Exactly, Ron. In yep. the mind, it starts in the mind. So things that we've gone through, things that you know we internalize, we push that in our body. And our body's like, okay, let me just stick that here for right now because I can't deal with it because we're dealing with something else. So what happens is it stays in your body. It causes stress. Stress in turn causes inflammation. Inflammation in turn can cause disease. So the longer that we don't deal with something or internalize it, you're most likely going to end up with something. And it's due to our thoughts, you know, and not dealing with things. Yeah. And then back what? 17. Oh, in 1867, uh, Dr. Henry Mosley had stated that emotions that are not um, expressed through tears create other organs to weep. And so it's kind of the same concept. So if we don't deal with those emotions, if we don't deal with those situations, we internalize them, mm -hmm. which in turn create those diseases. So you, you suppress all your hard feelings. Your, your, your anger, your jealousy, your hatred, you keep all that down in all your grief, everything you, the more you suppress it, the more problems <laughs> you have with your, that there's, there's your headaches. Yeah. There's your joint aches there. You know, heart my conditions. neck aches, your heart conditions. <laughs> you keep it all down. I'm part of that and, club. Just FYI. You know, you got, <laughs> now, which is why I said, if you'd have told me five years ago that I was going to be doing this, I'd have laughed in your face because mm -hmm. I was one of the Kings of, you just you just hold on to it you know be the pillar you cannot show emotion any way shape or form yeah. and it, it does take a toll yeah well there are times that emo showing emotion is the worst thing you can do 
-hmm. Yes. Because well, it gives other people power, but then well, when you can express it, then you need to. Well, I think, well, and I would say to that one, you're around the wrong people, first of all, around the wrong people. If you can't express yeah. your emotions around people, you're around the wrong people. <laughs> I'm saying like in the military. Oh, you, absolutely. Yeah, oh. you're going you're gonna to be beat up for showing your well, emotions. Back in the day, yeah, that's yeah. where it really, you know, Not you that. have to be, you can't show anything. And then when I got into law enforcement, yeah. they pretty much said, well, you know, you don't, you don't show emotion no matter what type of scene you're on because right. the community is looking up to you to be that, that rock, that pillar. They're like, you will agree. And I, I had a guy tell me this, yeah. this is when we were going through training. He said, you grieve on your own time. That might not be when you're done with your shift. That might not be three years from now. That might be 10 or 15 years from now. But you grieve on your own time. Other than that, you hold on to it. And I like, think it's a generational thing yeah. too. Like well, we yeah. grew up, you know, you didn't show those emotions. You didn't, you know, and as as of course we grow and learn. We <laughs> drank out of the garden hose though. Oh yeah, we did. Oh yeah. It was safe to back then. Well, Not yeah, so much now. True, yeah. <laughs> well, the water here I wouldn't drink mm -hmm. out of the out of the no. tap. No. But you know, yeah, we did a lot of things that People nowadays like riding the back of a truck. Oh gosh, yes. Without yeah. in a lawn chair where you're sitting up almost as high as, <laughs> as the edge of the bed. Yeah. yeah. And you're sitting there going, and there's a problem on, on dirt roads bouncing around and nobody even thinks anything of it. You the know? Dust from the, the but now you get a ticket for that. Yeah. You know? It, it's like I mean, we even rode in the back of campers that were being towed. We weren't yep. supposed to. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Things that, I mean, so many things. I mean, even metal Tonka trucks are looked down oh, upon yeah. these days. Crazy. Right. As a tetanus issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> we the good were, old days. Well, you know, I grew up, I grew up everywhere. I was always the new kid. Gotcha. And I was not my, we were not military. My dad was a draft dodger. Gotcha. And, uh, not intentionally. Yeah. Well, I guess intentionally. I was born intentionally to keep him from being drafted to go to Vietnam. Okay. So we went to where there were jobs, but we were always the, the new kids. I mean, mm -hmm. I changed schools probably some years, two times, three times a year. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to be me, mm -hmm. to stand, you know, to to fit in fast. So mm -hmm. so just like you guys, mm -hmm. minus the military. He was in the military, Thank but we didn't have kids in that. We have, you know, since we've been adults, we've moved five times since we've been married. Gotcha. And that's, this is, mm -hmm. the, yeah, two apartments. Oh, the yeah. house, the house, and the house. <laughs> the house, the house, the house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I never lived in one place as long as we did our last house. Yeah. It's that weird, isn't it? It is. That was 23 years we lived in that house, and the house before that was 14 years. Will mm -hmm. I make it 24 here? I, I see me at the the nursing home across the road <laughs> sooner than than that. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, I understand. You know, all of your past. Mm -hmm. I understand where you guys came from, and I know. So I now know how you got to where you are, mm -hmm. and I think you're right you would not have seen this coming. This is that bus. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Did you, uh, when you were in Omaha, did you, how, how did you find out about it? You were just looking at some stuff or looking the through guy that, the guy that, or the guy that Mike had oh, the Facebook ad. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you just, you just downloaded his program or. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. And who was it? Yeah, it was on uh... Jose Silva. Okay, I, I've heard that name before. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I've, I've heard that name before. I yeah. Oh. I, 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 I think I've seen the book. That's where I know the. Yeah, the name. and Jose Silva actually um, was in the army. Yeah, and that's, was, where, he did that's yeah. where he started basically learning more about his program. And then when he went home, he was actually utilizing it on his children. And, you know, like he would get them into hypnosis and he'd be reading them a book. And then he found that the daughter, 
even though she didn't know the book and she really couldn't read, she was starting to read with him. Hmm. She was, you know, going verbatim. They were on the same energy field on the same wavelength. It was really, really interesting. And then they thought he was crazy. So he started doing it with the neighbor's kids. <laughs> and then the neighbor's kids, their grades started going up and they were, their memory was amazing and what they were able to do. And he's like, so you still think I'm crazy? I just did it to the neighbor's kids. So yeah. this sounds like a lot of the experiments yeah, that they did at Aberdeen Proving Grounds and other. Yeah, your, your mind, your mind can do a lot more than what people think. Oh, my oh God. absolutely. I've said that forever. I think was it psyops? I think uses a lot of that. Stuff yeah, psy too. yeah, psyops. Psy they'll and do military your military and things like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, the mind is amazing. We yeah. don't realize <laughs> how powerful we are just as an individual being ourselves. Mm. You know, we have some amazing tools, and our brain is one of them. Yeah, I know. In the military, it's it's just most of it was mental anyway. Mm -hmm. it, the, the physical part was I, I didn't have any problem with that if you yeah. get to the mental it, it was pretty easy yeah yeah and it's you you know doing a road march or whether you're yeah. running because someone took a wrong turn and now you're doing <laughs> three more miles yep the story fourth drum and you think man i just can't take another step well yep. by the time you finish saying that how many steps have you already taken i know so, you already just took more than one step. So you're like you said, it, it is mental. Just, you know, the, yeah, I hate to use it. I used it so many times to suck it up and drive on, but that's the, that's how we did it. You just yeah. go. A lot of it was mental and you don't realize how strong you really were until you kicked it in with your mind. Yep. So Gary has a question. here. He says my voice jerks, which started with a chemical burn, could mind control. In throat. In his yeah, throat. his throat. He 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 quivers. I mean, it sounds like he's quivering when he's talking. Gotcha. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Because a lot of times, too, when we go through something that traumatic, you know, other things kind of domino mm -hmm. effect, I guess you could say. Uh, with that, so if if it wasn't inhaled or anything that physically scarred your voice box or anything like that. Uh, it was probably it just, could have been. It could have been, yeah. And it could have been that, yes. Yeah. So if yeah. it was more just trauma related as far as just the mental aspect of it. Um, but one good thing that we can try and see if it would work for you. It's one of our tools. I don't know, um, Gary, if we, I can't remember where we were at. Um, at the time, but we do have tools that we use and one that would be beneficial for you would be our CCT, which is our command cell therapy, where you visually see when we go uh, into hypnosis, we have you visually seeing the tissues going back to how they were prior to that chemical burn. If it was, you know, if it was in, uh, inhaled like that and your body can actually heal itself. So, and even rebuild uh, those muscles, those striations to where it gets them back to working order. Is there an, it's going to sound weird. Age no. No. I mean, is there, you know, is there a time that we are too old to go back? No, yeah. no. Okay. Now we won't, we won't go younger than seven or eight. Um, just because of, um, you know, just the maturity level. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of times we won't do that. Um, it would just be more of a talk therapy with any, anyone younger than, than seven or eight. But as far as age limit, the other direction, absolutely not. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear you have, guys have big ethics. We have big what? Ethics. Ethics? Absolutely. Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. That's, that's huge because, you know, there is a lot of stuff on the news about mm -hmm. letting children that age and little older mm -hmm. make decisions that they shouldn't be making. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely not. Yes. That's, that's disturbing. Yeah. I'd see a different doctor, Gary. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh, this was a while back. Yeah. yeah. Well, well and what's, yeah, yeah. And what's sad about that. It's probably more of a mal malpractice thing uh, that he just doesn't want to touch it or look at it, which is, yeah really sad but yeah i find a new what to tell you exactly what happened 
Pastor Gary used to be the zone commissioner down in Caldwell County. Okay. okay. He used to make the road signs for all your county roads. Yes. The vinyl on the vinyl cutter that they used at that time he was using got recalled and canceled because of the vapors when they cut it was coming up oh, off what well, people were breathing. That's what happened to Pastor Gary. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Gary, I'm, I'm, I'm hate that that happened. I mean, that's, that's something that's unfortunate that, you know, it's about pushing out the products and mm -hmm. we'll figure out the, the issues. Right. Yeah. yeah. As like Agent Orange, you know, you got a lot of people, yeah. you know, back in the military from that stuff. And it's just, it's we have, huh. we have a family member that that's what he passed from was, was that, and uh, we we're trying, trying to figure out it, how that passed to the children mm. you know, through, through his body into theirs. Sure. So the children were born after the exposure. Mm, okay. Through so, his DNA. Yeah, yeah. Right. But how is it affecting them? Because there's a lot of, I mean, just this part of the family has an amazing store, has amazing stories of things that shouldn't, wouldn't have, all these things wouldn't happen to one family. Mm. But then there's also people that were in that town that they're all showing signs of different <laughs> cancers and stuff in the town that they were growing up in. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. She was yeah. telling us that um, his cousin was telling us that hardly anybody has gone untouched by cancer in this one town. Yeah. And that's so unfortunate. This passed through the yeah. DNA. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, of the whole town, I mean, that's not the, that's not the agent orange part. The agent orange part is the di a different yeah, that's their family. Yeah. The town itself. That sounds like it was in the water supply. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you have, if you know, but you know, these, what was the, I cannot remember the name of that movie to save my life, but I had Julia Roberts and she, she played, oh, uh, um, Brock. Brock, um, yes. Brock. Aaron Brockovich. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, it's a testament to the, exactly what you're saying. You know, you have these big corporations that move in. And oh, they're upstream, and then they start putting things in the water, and then you know, cancer runs rapid. Was yeah, she was yeah, um, spraying here through the uh, years ago yeah. at the uh, old insulation plant out there, mm -hmm. where they buried barrels and stuff. So yeah, a lot of things go on like that in your water supply. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, even you know, even things that you know we put down the garbage disposal or you know, flush down the toilet. If you do pills, that's going in your water supply too. And we don't realize how much, you know, the concentration really is. Yeah. I don't like throwing away anything no. like that. And they, and people may not know this, but you can dispose of your bad old medication at almost any hospital mm -hmm. or drugstore. Yeah. And they will take it off your hands. So don't throw they it in the trash. It. Or mm -hmm. any sheriff's department will also take it now. Oh, oh I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Bad. They would rather it go there than end up in the hands of somebody else. Oh, my gosh. End up in a landfill where some kid in the future would grab it and go, oh, a pill. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Tic Tac. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we're getting near. The we're at the last half hour of the show. I can't believe we've gone this long. I know. It doesn't seem I know it's gone. I've watched the time. I was like, oh my god! I don't know. It, it always oh, goes goodness. fast. And when we have questions, and we've got, you know, we're like I said, you're going to see a lot of a lot of listening mm -hmm. and a lot of thinking. So, and we got a lot of people listening over on Rumble right now too. Oh, okay. Well, if any of them have any questions, please let me know what they are. I know I put it in there if they have any questions to ask them and we put it on here. So we're going to talk about some personal thoughts. Yes. So one of the questions that we ask almost everybody is if you were able to time travel, mm -hmm. would you go forward or backward? We'll just start with that one first. So mm -hmm. think about that. And when you went forward or backward, where would you like to go? Or when would you like to go? Ooh, that's a good one. That is a good one. 
That's my question I came up with. That we use it all the time now. <laughs> yeah, you came up with a great that one on is, that one, Ron. Yeah, that is a good one. Ah, they're down here in the uh, Miramar Beach. Gary, nice. oh, oh, yep, yeah, Miramar Beach, Florida, or if you've heard the of Panhandle. Destin and the Panhandle, yeah, they're, by they're me. down down there by us, Gary. Yeah, near you guys. I, if I would go to time travel, I would, I would probably go back. Okay. And to when would you think that you would want to go back to? So there everybody pretty much says is back. Yeah. I would go back to you know, I don't if it would be when I was contracting. Or if I was there when I was in the military, my last duty station. It doesn't have to be in your life. It could be any time. Thank you. See, mine would be, I was going to say the same thing going back, but, you know, seeing these individuals that utilize this, you know, in the 1800s and, oh, you know, okay. really, I, I would love know. to see their perspective on that, you know, because we don't hear a lot about that these days. And I would love to go back and really kind of, you know, pick their brain, so to speak, on, you know, what they've seen. Um, what was it 18? I'm trying to remember the book that we uh, had listened to, um, where they just started this new way. <coughs> um, I think it was 18, 1889. Um, and it really kind of, it still kind of went into uh, 1909, but it was talking about the new thought you know, where it's positive, uh, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you're really focusing on that positivity. And then the more you focus on positivity, you start to see more positive come to you, you know, so kind of that law of attraction style mentality. So I, that would, that would be mine. I'd love to. I know where I'd go now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a lot of people do not know that Sigmund Freud mm -hmm. got his start in hypnosis. Right. Started practicing hypnosis. He did not get the results that he wanted. They said that he was actually a little bit too aggressive, which is in hypnosis. We're not telling you what I want. You're telling me what you want. I would like to go back and watch him do a hypnosis session mm -hmm. because they said he, he would, he got too demanding. <laughs> because, well, you're not giving me the answer that I want. Well, it's not about your damn right. answer. <laughs> It's about your client. And I'd like to see that. I would like to see him do a hypnosis session because yeah. that's why he went into psychoanalysis because he is the act. He actually found out that we do have a subconscious, mm -hmm. yeah. but never I've talked with other people taking psychology class. Like, yeah, they never mentioned anything about Freud and starting off in hypnosis. Like, yeah, he of course did. They won't. yeah, no, they're not going to because he, uh, not the right guy for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the way I always looked at him, he was a results person. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a, um, he wanted to do the research, but he wanted, he wanted to make sure that the answers tailored to what yeah, he was huge. To his theory. Yes. So his hip hypothesis was always correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's always right. <laughs> so he was a narcissist. Yes. He which was. is why, which is why we never see narcissists because they're never wrong. They don't see anything wrong. There's nothing wrong. Right. With them. Nothing wrong with them. Yeah. We got to, well, uh, what do you do uh, if you have a client that's a narcissist? Well, they never come to us because there's never anything wrong with them. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Now they're people that they prey on. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, he was a narcissist. Yeah. yeah we, have a, a, we have a friend that does classes on how to recognize a narcissist mm -hmm. and, uh, She's also a demonologist, so it's oh, really interesting. interesting. So, so have you guys ever come across anybody that might have been possessed? Yeah. No, not as of right now. No, I, um, we I have. Think of, think of a few. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, we have had one in particular that um, when I had them in hypnosis. Um, 
they kept seeing this dark figure, you know, a light behind them. I mean, it was dark everywhere, except like this light coming from behind so they could see the silhouette, but they couldn't see features. They couldn't see anything, but there was a, a real pull to that person, whatever, whatever that was, you know, whoever they were. And as you know, this is one that was challenging for me as well, because we were just trying to find a way for her to either figure out who this person was or what direction this individual was trying to get them to go and ended up being her grandmother mm -hmm. um, had passed away many, many, you know, when she was I think 12 and it helped her get closure to her death and more connection with her grandmother. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be really surprised if you don't come across someone who comes to you and saying that they felt like they had been possessed yeah. uh, because there's more and more people that are coming out and saying that these days mm -hmm. and they don't want it to be medical. Mm -hmm. And some of the people, it's not medical. Mm -hmm. no. um, it is something on the spiritual side. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Not necessarily a ghost. Mm hmm a spirit, you know, spirituality is truly something that's in your head and mm -hmm. in your heart. Absolutely. And I don't think people look at it that way. They, I think they look at it more like I'm, I'm experiencing ghosts, whether they're there or not, they see them in their head. So they exist. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that ghosts don't exist because I truly believe that they do. I mm -hmm. believe that there are spirits out there. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. We can go on that all day. But I do believe there are some people out there that that's not what they're hearing. They're hearing they're hearing what they want to hear in their own heads. Yeah. Or whatever beliefs that they've brought with them from their childhood or traumatic experiences and had to find a different way to process it. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's turned mm -hmm. into. And let's see, we got about less than 20 minutes left. Do you guys have any questions that we can answer for you? About yeah. what does it about what does it cost? What's a for a session or is it cheaper online or, or no, it's, so, it's all the same. so what we do, we do offer different levels. So it can be 250 per session. Right now we're doing um, a holiday special because of everything that's going on. We offer pre-recorded, which is very general. Um, it's seventy-five dollars for the recording. You can listen to it, you know, for the rest of your life <laughs> if it benefits you. Um, but those are seventy-five dollars. Once you pay, it goes immediately into your email. Again, they're very general. So if you have a specific issue. It won't tailor to that. Right. Um, but if you do a full session, a full session lasts about two hours. So in that two hour time frame, you know, you get a recording. We'll do 250 per session. If it looks like you're going to need more than just one session, we do give discounts as that goes. So three sessions, six sessions, um, and so on and so forth. And then something to add on to that is how we do it. We it's kind of like the, the trickle down or the, the domino effect. So let's say you come for anxiety and, oh, what, we take care of your anxiety. It's like, well, now you got insomnia. So let's suck you in mm -hmm. for a few more sessions for insomnia. No. So we take care of your anxiety. Mm -hmm. You don't feel anxious anymore. You get better night's sleep that we just took care of your insomnia. Uh, if you were a smoke, well, you stopped smoking. Well, now I'm getting up in the morning and I'm working out. And now I feel better. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're working out, feeling better, well, now you're losing that excess weight that you, that you might've been mm -hmm. concerned about. So by taking care of one issue from just the domino effect can actually take care of okay, all Gary. the, you know, all the way down the line, which is, which is amazing. Absolutely. It's like, wow, I'm not anxious. I'm not depressed. I feel better. I'm working out. I've, more productive at work. I'm getting a raise. I, I got a raise. Now I can afford to buy that Mercedes that I wanted. So all from just taking care of your anxiety. And we do accept payments for those who, you know, do have issues, you know, if they, if they need a little more assistance. Um, yes. We can definitely do that as well. And the website again is complete holistic 
coachingandwellness.com. So I don't know if it's, it shows you guys at the bottom of our name. Yeah. Just that exactly. Dot com. It's a long one. We yes. didn't see that through yeah. <laughs> when we started. Yeah. I wish I could go back to that, but it's yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> There we go. I just want to make sure we put it out there again. Awesome. All right. Thank you. So, w, so you no, I don't. There's a link. Or... It will be a link regardless because okay. it says dot com. Right. Now, when you do your YouTube videos, are they live or are they pre recorded? Right now, I'm doing them pre recorded. Mm -hmm. So I haven't done any live yet. The only lives I've really done, aside from this one, is usually on our Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'll do a Facebook live. Here and there, okay. bring up certain things. Hey, you know, are you, you know, suffering from stress? Here are the symptoms of stress. You know, what can we do to help you with stress? Mm -hmm. Your anxiety. Uh, so, yeah, anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. Usually have been quite a few of them. Yeah, a lot of people don't recognize GAD. <laughs> no, no, they don't. No, they don't. They'll, they'll just like, think they're depressed and, and move on. Yeah. And, no, it's it doesn't work that way. No. Have you helped uh, a lot of people or veterans with PTSD? Haven't had. That's the interesting one. We, you'd think within our area that we would have quite a few. Yeah, but we haven't. We actually got invited. We went and spoke at uh, there's a a local veterans. Group support, group support group and they called us up at the last minute and said hey we just you know found you guys could you come and talk tonight We're like yeah we went up there and talked with people they loved it and as we started to see sadly it's like well i want the help but i'd rather complain about not having help mm -hmm. so that i have something to complain about it's like wow well, and, and it's and it's bad and to actually to not just say that it's us, we had run into a doctor from Canada who was a veteran of the Canadian military. And he walked up, he goes right out of the blue. He said, so how do you deal with the veterans here? I was like, they want the help, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have the same problem in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's like, they would rather complain about the VA or, you know, gripe about, well, there's not any help. No one wants to help me. When in fact it's like, hey, you can you can come. We will be more than happy to help you out. Whether it's you know holistic coaching, to whether you say that, well, I don't want to say I'm going to a therapist. Well, you can go to a holistic coach. Yeah, you know everything is in alignment with you. Mm -hmm. Or we can do meditation. if you want meditation. If you want to do a hypnotherapy session, <laughs> we can do that to help you get back on track and and address what your issues are. I'm like yeah, you know I. I don't think so. I'm good. I want my service dog. Yeah. Which they're great. They're great for certain things, but they're not going to help you mm -hmm. get deal with that issue that you're experiencing. Right. Yeah. We've yeah. even we've even been approached by and you know followed up with several veteran support groups um, and that help with PTSD mm -hmm. and suicide and just improvement for our veterans, and they turned us away as well. And we were we were offering our services to them for free, even though they came to, they came to us right first, saying, "Hey, oh my gosh, hypnotherapy! This is great. Can you do this? Yep, we can do this." Gave them all the you know here here's the tools. This is how we can address it. This is what we can do to take care of it. Like, oh, thank you so much. This is awesome. We'll get back with you. Radio silence. Radio Absolutely. silence, and that's yeah. where as we started seeing. Of course, some of the people that I'd work with. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing some of that mentality is some of them just, I'm just going to deal with it. I'm just going to muscle through. Yeah. Well, why are you muscling through? What, what effect is that having on your family, mm -hmm. your work? You know what? There's, there's that trickle down effect again. It's like, well, I'm just going to muscle through. I'm going to wake up mad at the world, mm -hmm. hating everybody, <laughs> being depressed, being angry, having anxiety, no one wants to be around me. Well, at what point do you really, really want to address that issue and move on with your life? Because yeah. it's also having an effect on everybody else as well. And there is help out there. We're more than willing mm -hmm. to uh, 
to help out and help someone address their issues Absolutely. and get them, get them wrong. And work with people, you mm -hmm. know, cause we know sometimes that's our cost is a little high for people. So we, you know, we even take that in consideration and work mm -hmm. with people there as well. So. Well, okay. Thank you so much. I do have, here's my last question for you. I'm going to go completely the opposite way than I was going before. If you could give hypnotherapy to anyone, you don't mm -hmm. even, you know, anyone in the world or dead or alive, Okay. Who would it be and mm -hmm. why? Ooh. Who? Hmm. I mean, sometimes, you know, we want to know how people's minds work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Why? I mean, why Why was Hitler a nut job? Well, you can't say Biden either because he's got nothing. Oh, come to on. That's who I was hoping they would. <laughs> I, I think they're really worse than state of hypnosis. <laughs> yeah. <he's> just... <laughs> Constantly. That is a great question. Mm -hmm. I, who I would like to do it on is um, British musician. British or Scottish? Scottish. Uh, Louis Capaldi. Louis Capaldi. He has Tourette's. And he had developed, and we were watching a show on him, mm -hmm. and you kind of figured that's like, we usually ask the question, so what was going on in your life before blah? Mm. like oh well everything was fine and this was great and i was this and then boom i had this happen okay that's where we can start and work back to so he started getting ticks which was brought up into tourette's and his family noticed that he was getting these ticks right about the time it was his grandmother or his aunt it was his aunt his 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 aunt had passed away she committed suicide mm. so we're like you're dude we can we can we can help with that because his mother they already know. Yeah. Well, they did a documentary on that. So that's how we found out okay. about that. But his mother said that's exactly when she noticed those changes. So yeah. in that trauma in that traumatic event, that's what created mm -hmm. his, his Tourette's mm -hmm. um, guarantee that. Okay. Tori, you. Oh, um, I would love to go back to the Egyptian time period and really pick their brains as how they came to develop the pyramids and, you know, just, just the improvements and the advancements that they did, you know, mm. that from that kind of thing. That's what I love. Aliens. They had yeah. help. Had to be. <laughs> had well, to be. I, mean, I mean, because, I mean, you look it. at it, but I mean, just to really just kind of confirm, you know, like you were talking about earlier, mm. just to get that confirmation of, of that being the case. Yeah, we actually had someone say they would go back in time to the Egyptian time mm -hmm. to see actually how they did it, yeah. how they built the pyramid. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be interesting. yeah, that'd be yeah. interesting. Yeah, because <laughs> that'd be wild. It yeah. does. Or you know, some of the things that mm -hmm. you know, most of my life has been erratic. Okay, my entire life. So I, I look at it and go. I would like to go back to a time that was much more peaceful. Sure. But then I look at that and go, when was that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's boring. I want, to know, yeah. I want to know why there are spaceships and spacemen on petroglyphs in the middle of the, the painted desert. Okay. Yeah. I want to know why. <laughs> Yeah, we think we think we're the first <laughs> ones here. We have such yep. such a skewed version of. I'm sorry, we have how many? I mean, there we don't we haven't even scraped the surface on how many galaxies are out there. But yeah, we right. think yeah. only the only beings here. We are so thinking so small. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's no way we're the only ones. We absolutely no, not. no way. I mean, absolutely not. You know, here you may actually come across some people that may have been abducted, may have been experiencers. That is very, and, and don't be surprised if you do. And you're going to be shocked as shit with their stories because we have heard some of the most amazing stories from people who who are abductees. Oh yeah, and, and and I just sit there and go, I don't know what I do. I mean, I really don't. Um, and I mean, I can name five people right off the top of my head that have been abducted. Really? I have not had that opportunity. No. no. You know, Travis Walton. I would love to talk to Travis Walton. Got his book. In, well, we do. In the, like yeah. you guys, I would like to know 
really because he doesn't know everything he experienced uh -huh. when he was on the ship. Right. Wow. Um, and just for people who are listening, if you saw fire in the sky, he was not dropped down naked in snowflake. Mm. He was not naked. Um, he said he said so himself. He goes, wow. I had on clothes. He goes, they were ripped. He goes, but I was fully dressed. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it is it is hollywood after all yeah yeah, yeah that's what he said yeah yeah. That's, yeah yeah anthony says yeah even throw throw negative native american stories of moving from planet to planet oh that'd be amazing yeah so i would yeah. I, I would love to be able well and yeah that's something else too my my great grandmother was full-blooded cherokee cherokee i would love to be able to you know, talk to her and really get an understanding of our culture because it was just kind of lost through the generations. Well, once we started intermixing the races, mm -hmm. we lose it because I, mm -hmm. I am I am part Cherokee and Blackfoot. Oh, awesome. And so I'm missing out on two different cultures that I know truly no. nothing about. And yes. I mean, I guess I could have gone to Tonopah and checked that out and saw what was going on down there, but it wouldn't have done me any good because I don't have any context, mm -hmm. you know, because my family has been away from that for so long. But, but I would like to thank you guys so much for coming on. This was a, this was a really great show, and we kept – we kept a lot of people's attention for quite a long time, and I appreciate that having you guys bring that to us. Oh, this I appreciate was you. Fun. Yes. Thank you so much for reaching out. Enjoy. I'm glad we got you. That I it was this wasn't what I thought it was. It mm -hmm. really wasn't. Yeah. I, yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. 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 We just kind of scratched the surface in a couple hours. So oh, sure. we just did a hypnotherapy session. <laughs> two hours. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel good. Feel great. Awesome. I feel like I need to get up and move around. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Icky joints. So, but thank you so much. I I really enjoyed it, and I'm so glad that I met met you at the paranormal conference. And yes, come on here. Awesome. And the one thing we didn't really talk about is why why do we need life coaches? So we may have to have you back on some other time. Okay. Right. Yeah, and that's that's a big one too. That's actually really, that's, right. yeah. There's Thank just you, some Anthony. out there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate it. Yes. Stay, and on, stay on here after cool. the show. We'll talk. We'll do. Okay. Yes, sir. Perfect. Yes, sir. We'll do. And again, like Mike said, you know, we've, we've got free consultation, 30 minute consultations to see if it works for you, whether it's coaching, whether it's, you know, whole body coaching, meditation, or uh, hypnotherapy. And there's the website address again for you guys to go and check that out. And please check it out and check out their podcast oh, yeah. again. And what was the name of that again? Go deep or go home. Yeah, I agree. Go deep or go home. Everybody. I've heard that one. We're, we're kind of a, a different approach to therapy, so you know, kind of the in-your-face sort of. Yeah, we hey. are of that generation. Yes. Wake up. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey wake up. Yeah. How much longer yeah, do you want to continue doing yes. what you're doing now that's not working? Mm -hmm. And people need to. I mean, they really do need to wake up and see mm -hmm. what's <laughs> truly going on in front of them. Not what they think is going on, but what truly is going on. Exactly. Absolutely. So, and I'm sorry, everybody. This ended up kind of dovetailing off my show last night near the end of it into this one so <laughs> you seem to get into a, a theme and it kind of sticks for a little it while stick with it on both days so, yeah yeah it, that worked out good so please make sure you guys <clears throat> check out the paranormal pride every monday night at 7 p.m central <clears throat> and it's mostly paranormal very seldom does it go to the other p word so make sure that you guys check check it out I will let you know who my guest is as soon as I decide who I want it to be. And uh, just make sure you check us out next Absolutely. Tuesday. If the weather's good, Carl, we might want to do another graveyard tour. Okay. That'd be great. Another live tour at a graveyard. Mm -hmm. well, that's awesome. This is a different yeah. one. Yeah, it's, it's okay. really different. Really different. And it's only, yeah. It's only right across the street from the last one we did. 
Oh, nice. oh okay. And it's that yeah. different. That different. Wow. Um, so okay. I think everybody will find it interesting. Um, right. The Not bad bad part is, is very well taken care of. Yeah, it's, it's dark in by spots. Yeah, <laughs> five o'clock. Yeah. It's weird. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. And just remember, but everybody, guys, check out the Billerites Network on Facebook, where we're live at the Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment's Facebook page, Things Network Facebook page, and Japan Paranormal's Facebook page. Oh, wow. Plus, check out all the other YouTube channels and Born TV on Rumble is where we're live at too so everybody check that out and again i want to thank mike and tori for being on the show tonight and uh we will see you all next tuesday night here on paranormal nation radio have a good evening thank you thank guys. you good night, good night everybody night.